the amount of people that used to come in clinically over the years when we had when every single patient of the thousands of patients that have come through where they'd come in and say i've got anterior pelvic tilt and we go yeah fair enough based on my training as an undergraduate osteopath at the time i can see why we're saying that right it looks like you have to the contrary and you start to realize you can only do this so many times and have that realization before you start going hmm physical exams suck and as we discussed yesterday on the live when we talked about um measuring the effect of belts on restricting lumbar flexion, specifically at L45 and L5S1, like we start to realize the severe limitations of physical exams. And, and the main reason here is that when we, an when we anteriorly rotate the pelvis, we, we, we typically see a, a commensurate change in the rate of curve in the lumbar spine. So an anterior, anteriorly rotated pelvis will result in a hyperlordosis, and a posteriorly rotated pelvis will result in a flattening of the lumbar, lumbar lordosis, meaning a flattening of the curve. The L5 S1 disc is a little bit of a wedge shape compared to the others because it's supposed to accommodate that angle, that slope that it's supposed to sit on for effective, normal, healthy alignment. When we do have too much of a slope, it does create a lot of shear, right? And the disc is designed to compress, not deal with that shear. So it doesn't like a true anterior an, an anterior rotation. And the reason I say it's misguided, it's not to be disparaging. You don't know what you don't know, but they are taught at university as I was taught as an undergraduate osteopath that you can do, you can make those observations, but they are so poor and so inaccurate. And it's only having that humbling experience of seeing literally thousands and thousands of patients with physical exams and their load bearing imaging, where we measure these things to the degree that you start to realize there are lots of illusions. But one of the reasons is the position of the engagement of the abdominal cavity, right? The engagement of the abdominal muscles is completely independent of the, of the position of the pelvis and the position of the lumbar spine. Now, in this position, you might say, oh, I've got anterior pelvic tilt because my tummy's sticking out. But if I engage my midsection, now it is not sticking out. So you're, we're best off leaving alignment issues alone unless we've had specific measurements. Lie on your back on the bed or on the floor and do the core engagement. Okay, now try the, the, the next step up, just lifting one leg. I repeat, that you can do, not what you can't do, and then progress on from there. So if you start by building up standardized and, and very repeatable movements, such as the squat with a neutral spine, the hip hinge with a neutral spine, you can steadily build a good degree of load tolerance in the neutral in a way that gathers momentum. If we can let more healing take place between these flare-ups by using a more safe and reliable strategy, such as the neutral spine loading, we're still strengthening all those same structures, but we're waiting to put them under more unpredictable loads such as that inflection, right? Your focus should be on the rehab because you guys all have the same fundamental problems.